بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزا نعلومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين We continue our study about social engagements based on Mafatihul Hayat, the keys of life by Ayatollah Javadi Amuli Hafadullah. The topic for this session is how to treat our guests. In Islamic culture, also in Abrahamic traditions in general, Hospitality is very highly regarded. Ibrahim ala nabiyyina wa alihi wa alayhi salam was very hospitable person to the extent that sometimes when he had no guests and he wanted to have his meal, he used to go outside and find someone to invite and have his, his uh, meal with him. Also, the Quran tells us that when the angels appeared in the form of human beings and went to visit Ibrahim ala nabiyyina wa alihi wa alayhi salam, he welcomed them and he thought that these people are strangers, they are not from this place and they must be hungry. So the Quran says, Farah. وَإِلَىٰ أَحْلِهِ فَجَاءَ بِعِجِلٍ سَمِينٍ فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ قَالَ أَلَا تَأْكُلُونَ So he went to his wife and family and quickly they prepared a roasted a calf for them and brought and put near them قَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ but then he realized that they are not eating. So he asked them, aren't you eating? So it was very established uh, practice in the life of Prophet Ibrahim and also other prophets. And in Christianity, in Judaism, in Islam, hospitability is very important. The Quran praises Ansar. Mu'minin in Medina who welcomed Muhajirin from Mecca and the Quran says in Surah Hash Ayah 9 Yuhibbuna man hajara ilayhim They love people who have migrated towards them because indeed these are like their guests We should remember this is a very important point that sometimes guest is your personal guest Sometimes it is guest of a community, sometimes it's a guest of our city, guest of our nation. These are all guests. For example, if someone doesn't come to my home, but has come to our community, he's our guest or she's our guest. Or someone has come to our city, if we are aware, inshallah we will talk about hadith which says that if a person visits another city, the people who are fellow believers should treat him as guest. Sometimes uh, tourists come to our city. Sometimes refugees come to our country. So these are different types of guests and you have to be treating them with respect. So when these Muhajirun went to Medina, Ansar welcomed them. And they offered to them what they had. They were not also necessarily very rich, you know, but still they were happy to share with them what they had. And the Quran praises them. Actually, this is the ayah in which there is a mention of ithar. Ithar means a level higher than muvasat. Muvasat means to share what you have with someone else. Ethar means to prefer the other to yourself. وَيُؤْثَرُونَ After يُحَبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ 
ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما اوتوا ويؤثرون على انفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة ومن يوق شح نفسه فاولئك هم المفلحون even if they themselves need something they give preference to their guests who have come to Medina and Allah says whoever has been protected and saved from miserliness these are those who are successful muflihun they have reached falah so these are the um, general Quranic uh, framework we have other cases but uh, we mentioned the case of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the case of Ansar in Medina. Then we move to uh, move on to discuss our hadith. The first heading here is the necessity of respecting and honoring guests. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Ja'at Fatima tashku ila Rasulullah ba'da amra. Lady Fatima went to the Prophet and had some problems and wanted to mention to the Prophet. فَأَعْطَاهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كُرَيْسَةً But Rasulullah gave her a piece of writing. وَقَالَ تَعَلَّمِي مَا فِيهَا Learn what is here. If you remember a few days ago, we had something about uh, this hadith and this writing that how important it was for Lady Fatima. So, in that writing that Rasulullah taught Lady Fatima عليها, and gave her is mentioned فَلْيُكْرَمْ وَيْفَهُ Whoever believes in God and the hereafter must honor his or her guest. Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam says أَكْرَمْ ضَيْفَكَ وَإِنْ كَانَ حَقِيرًا Honor your zayf, your guest. Even if your guest is Either a small means very young, like saqir, or it's more likely haqir here means someone that socially is someone that other people may not, you know, treat him with maximum regard and respect. He's not well known. He's not, uh, you know, very uh, maybe I don't know respected for some reason unfortunately sometimes people when they don't know someone maybe they don't treat them with respect or when someone is not rich or someone is not you know from their own city or you know anywhere when guest comes to you you have to respect him as a guest without conditioning that on his or her social status The next hadith says, Nazala bi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi dhaifun. A guest went to the Prophet. Falam yajid inda ahlihi shay'a. And the Prophet had nothing in his home. He checked with his family. They didn't have anything to offer to the guest. فَدَخَلَ عَلَيْهِ الرَّجُلٌ مِنَ الْأَنصَارِ Then one of the mu'mineen from Medina, one of the Ansar, went to the Prophet, فَذَهَبَ بِهِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ He said, let me take uh, the guest to my home. So he took the guest to his own family. فَوَضَعَ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ الطَّعَامِ And put food in front of the guest. Also, in order to make the guest feel comfortable, وَأَمَرَ مْرَأَتَهُ بِإِطْفَاءِ السِّرَاجِ وَجَعَلَ يَمُدُّ يَدَهُ إِلَى الطَّعَامِ كَأَنَّهُ يَأْكُلْ حَتَّى أَكَلَ الضَّيْفُ الطَّعَامِ 
they didn't have enough food. So what he did, asked his wife to uh, extinguish the, you know, the fire. You know, they used to have something, you know, like a lamp, a light, to make the room dark. And then he used to r stretch his hand towards the food, but not eating anything, leaving the food for the guest because they didn't have enough for both of them. So he offered his own food to the guest. Then, فَلَمَّا أَصْبَحَ Next day, when he met the Prophet, the Prophet told him, قَدْ عَجِبَ اللَّهُ مِنْ صَنِيعِكُمْ بِضَيْفِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with your behavior with your guests. وَنَزَّلَتْ وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا And Rasulullah said, this ayah has now been revealed. Those who prefer others to themselves or themselves even if they have need. So this shows that how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves uh, hospitality, loves uh, sacrificing your comfort, you know, your meal to others so that they can have a sufficient amount of food. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said to Imam Ali, Akram al-dhayf walaw kana kafiran. Honor your guest even if has no faith. Then, this is the hadith that I said we will talk about it. If someone comes to our town and shares our faith, Rasulullah says, إِذَا دَخَلَ الرَّجُلُ بَلْدَةً فَهُوَ ذَيْفٌ عَلَى مَنْ بِهَا أَهْلٌ مِنْ دِينِهِ حَتَّى يَرْحَلَ عَنْهُمْ Shaykh Saduq mentions this in إِلَلُ الشَّرَاءِ from Rasulullah. If someone comes to a town, he is the guest of those who are from the same faith till he departs from there. So a moment comes from another part of the world, he is our guest, we should as a community make sure that, that he would not face any problem, he should not feel lonely and abandoned till he is here. Now some manners for uh, hosting guests. Imam Baqir salam said, when a guest comes to you, consider few things. For example, don't ask your guest to do something for you. The guest maybe is a carpenter, for example. I say, okay, now that you are here till the food becomes re ready, please fix our cupboard. Uh, the other person, for example, is a person who works in a garage. You know, could you help me change the oil of my car? This is not good we should not ask our guests to do something for us or you know to, after we eat you know to wash you know to clean sometimes the guest is very close to us and they really want to help and if we don't let them help you know they will be you know sad they feel that we have uh, distanced ourselves from them that's another issue but you should not expect and you should not ask and if they offer you should not easily accept unless you are sure that they really want to do this and if they don't do it they will not be happy so minal jafa istikhdam al-dhayf when we connect it it becomes minal jafa istikhdam al-dhayf this is jafa this is uh, injustice this is zulm to uh, employ your zayf in the sense that you ask him to do something for you to ask her فَإِذَا نَزَلَ بِكُمُ الضَّيْفِ فَأَعِينُوهُ وَإِذَا ارْتَحَلَ فَلَا تُعِينُوهُ When the guest comes, you should help him. 
bring his luggage, you know, uh, take him to the room, help him settle. But when the guest is leaving, don't help him in the sense that don't make his departure faster, you know, by taking, you know, his luggage outside, you know, taking his shoes outside, uh, quickly uh, calling a taxi. Uh, let him feel that you are not happy that he leaves. You really want him to be there. Of course, if he needs help in the sense that he has, you know, many luggages or heavy luggage to take, that's good to help him. But not helping in the sense that he feels that you want him to live faster. Also, uh, Imam Bakr says, give him some provision, Zabvedu. Maybe he's going to travel uh, for long distance. Maybe he needs a meal. Maybe he needs some sandwich, some fruits. I don't know. Maybe financially, you know, he's not very well off. You know, maybe he doesn't have any money in his pocket. Uh, zavvedu. Give him some zad, some provision. Watayyibu zada, And make his provision, even if he has something, uh, make it, uh, you know, better. And give good thing. Or if you want to give him, give him good things, something tayyib, something pleasant. This is from generosity. We should not uh, think that, okay, he was my guest, I looked after him or her, why now I should even give him you know, something for his way back? No, this is not generosity. A generous person, whether someone is in his house or is leaving his home feels that it's, he's still under my uh, you know care and under my support rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said min haqq dhayf an tamshiya ma'hu fa tukhrijahu min harimika ila al bab one of the rights of the guest is that you escort the guest and go up to the last door for example there is a door uh, for internal side then there is a yard then there is another door which is the external door you should go all the way till he goes out of your uh, you know uh, house and out of your land the next heading is you should not fast when you have guests. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَلَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُمْ أَنْ يَسُومُوا إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ ضَيْفِهِمْ If it is not months of Ramadan, if it is not wajib fasting, they should not fast unless uh, after they get permission from the guest. Because if you as a person who is fasting offer him food he, he would not feel happy to eat you cook when you are fasting you bring food when you are fasting this doesn't give good feeling to your guest so if it is not wajib or if it is wajib but you have flexibility for example it's qadha qadha of fasting is wajib but still you have time till uh, next month of Ramadan, don't fast when you have guests that stays uh, for a you know, day, you know, during the day with you. Another thing is that sometimes you have invited guests, sometimes you have unexpected guests. They just come they surprise you they knock your door they come all of them are your guests all of them you should honor and respect of course those that you have invited you should you know be more prepared and you should offer more Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said when your brother comes he comes he's not invited he comes okay uh, invite him inside, uh, give him what you have. 
but if you have invited him you have to prepare something good even if you have to go and buy something here you do a little of takalluf. of course not too much that you know you borrow lots of money you know something out of you know uh, your weight completely but a little takalluf it's okay you sh shouldn't just you know say okay I whatever I have I give uh, my guest no if you don't have anything and you don't want to offer you know anything don't invite when you invite you should be more prepared to give also Imam Sadiq said La taqul when your brother comes to your home don't ask him have you eaten your food have you eaten your meal have you had your meal maybe he feels embarrassed to say I haven't eaten anything whatever you have bring offer a person who is really generous is the one who offers what he has someone unexpectedly has come now whatever I have I offer another thing is that you eat with your guest so here Imam Qadim alayhi salam says anna rasulallah inna rasulallah kana idha atahu dhayf akala ma'ahu when guest was coming to rasulullah he was eating with the guest wa lam yarfa' yadahu min al-khan hatta yarfa' al-dhayfu yada and he was not stopping from eating from the you know table unless the guest was stopping because if you stop earlier the guest feels again embarrassed to continue maybe he's more hungry than you or maybe for example he was speaking he was slow in any case maybe he needs more so even if you have uh, eaten enough try to keep yourself busy so that your guest doesn't feel you know he's alone and no one else is eating this is the manner of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. Inshallah we will continue this discussion in the next session. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.